Alright, so I just purchased a Mac Mini and we are going to talk about running a nested hypervisor within VMware Fusion. And I'm using this standard VMware Fusion and I think the primary difference between that and the professional is the inability to edit the uh, virtual networks like we see in the uh, VMware Workstation Professional on my PC. So what we're going to do here is we're going to load Windows 8 Professional. Just kind of demonstrate uh, what it's like to enable a hypervisor, uh, Hyper-V, rather. And we'll just choose more seamless because I'll probably end up using this for other things. So that looks fine. We're going to go ahead and use the Ethernet cable. And under processors, we're going to give it four cores. We're going to leave the RAM just as it is, and we're going to enable Hyper-V applications on this machine. And we're also going to pre-allocate the space here. All right, so that's going to take a little time. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I'll return shortly. All right, so now that this is complete, we're going to go ahead and fire up Windows 8. Go ahead and select Pro. And just like in Windows, the Windows version of VMware Workstation, it will go ahead and if you choose to put the um, install media and then allow it to, it will automate the install install file from here. All right, so Windows has installed and it's done a couple reboots. Now we'll go ahead and shut down. And the final step here is going to be to change the operating system. So we'll go ahead and hit setup and we're going to go to general and switch it to Hyper-V unsupported. There we are. And uh, this is going to allow us to then nest the hypervisor from Microsoft within VMware Fusion. And I must say, you know, by and large, VMware is winning when it comes to desktop virtualization. Um, I haven't used Parallels in a while, but the ability to virtualize um, the boot camp and to install a nested hypervisor like Microsoft's Hyper-V is um, pretty neat in my opinion. And for the Mac, we also have some other feature sets where if you launch a Windows app, it'll seamlessly install, uh, install and or launch that app in the VM. So there's some considerations that... Um, you know, the VMware Fusion can do that you really don't need to do in the Windows Edition, I guess. Uh, so what we're going to do now is go to Programs. We're going to turn on Windows Features. And we are going to basically enable Hyper-V. And it will require a reboot. And then essentially you have your ability to nest a hypervisor. Um, I am studying for MCSE and I have a study group of some friends. One of my friends wanted to know if she should buy a Mac or a PC and she had an interest in getting Mac. Uh, she wanted to buy a laptop and I think the Mac laptops chargers uh, just besides from the Microsoft uh, Surface, I don't know of too many chargers that are magnetic for laptop type devices in the Windows world. So uh, being that she had an interest, 
in doing so and a little bit of a budget, we went ahead and um, got her a Mac book or a Mac Pro and we uh, nested Hyper-V within Windows 8. So she kind of has a little cross compatibility. She can go in and run server under the hypervisor and a pretty good solution. I do like the fact that Microsoft has given their hypervisor um, for free within Windows 8, but I really wish that I could nest hypervisors within Windows 8. Um, then I wouldn't have to purchase VMware, but it's worth the money as VMware seems to be on top of the virtualization game anyways. So, And um, another thing that I've noticed, and I, I think I'm going to go ahead and do a Mac versus PC kind of uh, blog at some point, um, but I have noticed two things about Apple. One is that Apple software tends to run a little cheaper than Windows, despite the fact that the hardware is probably uh, exorbitantly much more expensive uh, in that, you know, $1,000 for a system with 16 gigs of RAM, uh, I can get a system in Windows with for two grand with 64 gigs of RAM and a lot more expandability. Um, However, the small footprint is nice, and uh, they do make solid products. So uh, you, you'll just, as you go on, if, if you're like me and you kind of use both Windows and Mac, you'll kind of get the picture that uh, Windows is more like an Android phone where you have more functionality. Uh, Mac is kind of more like an iPhone uh, where, you know, things are kind of set in stone. And what you can do, sometimes it's pretty easy to do it, especially for a normal end user, but for someone that wants um, to do more complex things, uh, Macintosh can at times seem limiting. So uh, we'll get into more of that later, but let's go ahead and just fire up a basic Hyper-V VM just to kind of prove out that, that this is possible. Uh, we'll fire it up, and what we're going to see is just, you know, it's going to prompt us. I uh, say invalid boot media or something to that extent. But if Hyper-V was not working, we would see various errors saying that the CPU doesn't support the hypervisor and things of that nature. So, so here we go. So uh, this wraps up VMware Fusion on my Mac Mini server and how to nest Windows hypervisor within it.